Hello, my friends. What's a flow quantification? Stick around and I will show you. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Bakken again. I'm an Amarai videographer. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced Amarai topics, troubleshooting, just like this one. So if you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so, it really helps out my channel. So thanks for that. I have a request from you guys uh, with this topic, flow quantification on the CSF. I'm happy today to bring you that topic. And I must admit, at our workplace, we don't do flow quantification very much. That's more for the studies. We do more the static part. So when it comes to CSF visualization, CSF examinations for the brain, there's two things of things you can do there. The one is static images. I'm going to show you that at the scanner. And the other one is flow quantification. I'm also going to show you that along with the post processing. So this topic can be a little bit difficult. I found a paper for you and I'm going to show you right here. And I will also put a link in the description down below for you uh, for a better understanding of this topic. So this paper is actually pretty new. It's from last year and it's free from Radio Graphics. You can download it and I will, like I said, put the link in the description down below for you. This would talk about phase contrast. We're using phase contrast approach when it comes to the flow quantification. So it's really good to have some background understanding regarding that. It will give you a nice introduction here, the basic of the phase contrast in the old approach. Nevertheless, it's gold and it's used per day. And here is some nice figures. And um, it's just nice to see this paper. And also along with that, you can see there's flow quantification when it comes to cardiac imaging. And it's also for brain, which I'm going to show you today. So this is for brain, this is in plane when it comes to CSF ventricles. And um, then along with that, they're also providing some uh, parameters, values here. You can uh, optimize and check it out. And the scan of the day, I'm going to show you this. This is the through plane on aqueduct. So this is exactly what I'm going to show you along with the post processing. Nevertheless, check this paper out for a better understanding. Without further ado, let's go to the scan and I will show you. All right, we are live at uh, 3T. And uh, for this purpose, also using our uh, head uh, 32 channel coil. Nevertheless, it's also possible to do this on 1.5 Tesla. Uh, it's one important message I want to share with you is also using our uh, PMU uh, for the finger for this purpose when it comes to uh, face contrast gating. All right, so let's go. We are now uh, going for our localizer first. And I'm going to show you why I'm going to choose those two sequences. This is what we call the static ones, the sagittal static images for visualization, right? Anatomy. So in the brain, Siemens 3, in the brain in the library, in 3D mode, for the cis, you can find a sequence at the lower volume. However, it's only transversal plane. Nevertheless, it's easy to make this as a sagittal as well. For the T2-way space, you can uh, find it in the same folder, a little bit above. So when it comes to the cis sagittal, why we use the cis sagittal? We're using it for anatomy, for the visualization. So I'm only going to position this in the sagittal plane, uh, add a little bit of face over something here, so we get the nose, we get the nose in the uh, back of the head, the fold over, and uh, we're only targeting a few slices in the ventricle, CSF ventricle, the mid part, which is important for this case. When it comes to T2 space, I'm targeting the whole, uh, covering uh, the whole um, uh, brain. There's no need to covering all the small part of the um, uh, CSF on this sequence because there will be no win for you. You have to lower your slices, you lower signal, and then you have to add on the face over sampling and you got the fold over and so on and so on. So I'm just uh, advise you to covering the whole brain and you will get a good T2 weighted as well. Back in the days, we did a standard 2D turbo spinnaker with sagittal for this purpose when we never didn't do the, the 3D space. So for this sequence, we have a very high uh, T, um, uh, TE. We want to cause defacing. And as you know, when you're familiar with all my, my videos, I will show you all the three sequences head to head and try to explain to you why we're doing this and what we're looking for at the end of the scanning part. So we're, gonna, we're just going to run these sequences now. 
like here, I'm only going to target a few slices in the mid part. So we can save scan time. And this is only for an anatomy, right? So while these three sequences are running, I'm going to take a look at this at the end of the scanning part. I want to know, move over to the quantification part. This is more like part two. In the Siemens 3, go to head, and a little bit low there, you have something called the flow folder. In this folder, you will find what we call in-plane flow quantification. It's a phase contrast technique, and that is attached to plane. And we also have what we call through plane. This is in transversal plane, where we're usually uh, targeting the aqueduct. That's where we usually position it. I'm just going to open this one to show you how it looks like. So like this one, remember it's only one slice. I'm going to target this in the sagittal plane, I'm trying to, with this one slice, have a good visualization of the, of the CSF ventricle. Something like that. Uh, for you, before we continue, I'm not going to run this uh, in plane sequence. I'm only going to run the through plane, which we also usually do uh, when we're first going to do flow quantification at work. So I have more experience with the through plane. Nevertheless, its work is the same. And there's one more thing I want to show you. When it comes to flow quantification or phase contrast, you need to have the most correct VANC as possible, velocity encoding as possible. If you're having too high, you get artifact. If you got too low, you get artifact. You need to stay a little bit above what is um, correct for the current case, the current patient, the current anatomy, right? So I will show you where you can find this VANC scout, which you can use as a scout for you to be able to find it easier with the correct VANC. So it's not in the brain library right here. You see there's no bank scout here. And as you're familiar with cardiac imaging, there's a bank scout in cardiac imaging. So here at the heart, Siemens tree at the heart, go down to flow. We have through plane and in plane. So we're going to choose in plane here. You have multiple scouts here. I'm just going to drag the number one there over and we're going to modify this one to the brain. The first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to choose this one to from ISO to fix because I want to have it fixed because the rest of my head protocol is at the fixed mode. So this pos positioning the same throughout your sequences is very important. Don't use fix, ref, ISO, use only one. So in this case, I'm using fix for everyone, even the localized is fixed. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit change here. We're gonna change the field of view to a little bit lower so it tailor more to the head. Uh, reduce slice thickness and uh, fill view phase 200. And here in the angio card common, you have encodings four. That means that you have four scouts, four uh, velocity encoding scouts, right? So you can see the number here is very high for the brain, for the cardiac is okay. And it's true, this is taken from the cardiac, so we need to change this to a little bit lower. I'm choosing eight, 10, 12. 14. And then it came to mind, I need to change it a little bit. So I'm using 8, 12, 16, and 20. In this case, I'm using 8, 12, 16, and 20. You can choose more if you want to, but I think this four rank uh, will covering for me. So I go into the physio. So before we continue, on the fly, when I did to modify the sequence, I did something wrong. And which also caused the results very badly. So I couldn't find the correct bank for uh, this case. However, late in the protocol, it came to my mind, oh man, I did something wrong, which I shouldn't have done. Uh, nevertheless, I will show you what I did wrong. So and I also try to explain to you why you shouldn't do it. So I'm just gonna run the sequence because this is the wrong sequence. It's not correct modified. I'm going to rename this one to aqueduct bank. So we're going to choose this in through plane aqueduct. I'm also going to remove the voice. There's no voice needed here because it's not cardiac. And so I'm just going to take no voice commands. Just drag the sequence up. I'm going to mark these two sequences because this is going to have this exact same position. 
the aqueduct bank is only a scout and then you have the main sequence right down there. So I right click, create copy references and I choose the center slice group and I choose OK. And you can see these two are now connected to each other, which means if I change the plane on the aqueduct bank, the main sequence is also changed along with that. So this will also make sure for me that everything is correct position. Okay. This is what you see in front of here is the C sequence. The C sequence is done now. It's uh, anatomy, right? It's a very good uh, visualization of the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, and then you have the aqueduct right there. This is exactly where we're gonna go for. So I'm just gonna do an MPR in, in those two other planes, planes. So we will get all the planes we can work at. It's better to use uh, good anatomy images rather than just localizer because there are small structures we're gonna use here now. So that's why I'm choosing this one. I'm just gonna do a transversion and then a coronal. It takes a few seconds to make these reconstructions. It's all good to have. Let me go back to uh, uh, the exam. And we're gonna go to browser. We're gonna drag and drop these two sequences in the exam card right there. So now we have three plain good anatomy images. This is exactly what we need. Okay. This is what something sometimes happens. We have some kind of two lines uh, positioning right here. We're going to choose only one line. It's, I find it's much easier. Like that one, line mode. So we're going to do a perpendicular to the aqueduct. So something like that. Okay. And we're going to run this bank. And this is wrong as I told you because I modified it wrongly and I couldn't find out why what I did wrong. But nevertheless we're gonna run that one and we're gonna show you. So look at these images. So what you see in front of you here now it's only eight images to go through. But you see this image right here is what we call refaced images. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that pretty soon. There's nothing to see, there's no aqueduct, there's no anatomy, it's not nothing at all, it's so badly. And right there, at that moment, I couldn't figure out what I did wrong. This is face contrast images, this looks like it's, it's not good at all. Nevertheless, while I didn't, couldn't, I, when I couldn't find out in the, on the fly what I did wrong, I just continued to do the through plane. I'm just choosing a, a 20 uh, rank right there. I also knew that they would be too high. And I did this on purpose. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do a few of those uh, through planes just to show you how it is to be too high, too low, or a perfect uh, bank. So what you see in front of you here is refaced images. You see there, the aqueduct is right there, nice. Then you have magnitude images, and then you have face contrast images. So before we continue, I just want to show you another link, which is, uh, could be important for you. So right here at Radiopedia, I will put the link in the description down below for you. So you can just click there and go directly to this site. You have CSF flow studies. This site is a very good explanation when it comes to what you're looking at. So let's stop there. You have reface images. How is the signal intensity right here? How is the background? Is it visible, not visible? And then you have magnitude images. We have face images. This is exactly the three images I show you. So have a further reading here, you will understand what you're looking at. All right, let's go back to the scanner. This is 20, right, at the face contrast images. So we're gonna do another one here. Let's choose 10. Run that one. Check this out. We get good refaced images. Also, it's Dark, bright, dark, bright. It seems, seems good. Seems correct. And let's uh, check this out now. See this little bit soft there. You don't have the bright, the dark, the bright, the dark. So we uh, might be too high on the rank of 20. Nevertheless, we're going to choose a very low one. So we want to enhance uh, the artifacts. I will show you why you, what you can look at when you get this kind of artifact. Let's choose two. That's low. And don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna compare all this at the end of the scanning. So, and then currently, when I was finished with the sequence, it came to mind. Oh man, I did wrong right there. 
I choose pulse triggering instead of pulse retro. Okay, that's what I did pulse triggering, but I'm going to choose pulse retro. And then you can choose 30 calculated faces, 30 images you can look through. So this is enough images to get to see the, the bright and the dark, the flow. This is what I did for the rank two. Okay. So let's go here now. And I'm going to show you the wrong aqueduct rank versus the correct one. So this wrong one, I was choosing the pulse trigger mode and the correct one is pulse uh, retro, right? So eight images right here is nothing to see. There's no bright and dark spots. Right here, you see it's much better. Dark, bright, dark, bright. And it's 30 images you can look through. This is exactly what I need. So with that being said, uh, with this kind of help, you can also see if you are being too low or too high, or there's something in between, which is perfect. So that's why we're using Vank Scout, if you want to use the Vank Scout. So this is correct one, the, the scout. So you can see here, you have eight here, 12, a little bit too high maybe, a little bit soft, 16, softer, 20 is very soft, it's not bright. So being around eight or so would be perfectly in this case. Okay, let's move over to the images, where flow quantification images. In the upper row here, you have rank two, and then here you have rank 10 and a lower one, 20. And these are the re-phase images, magnitude, and the phase contrast. Take a look at these images. So we're gonna zoom in right here now to have a better understanding. You see it is some kind of artifact right there. You can see there's small black dots in the white area. That's because you have aliasing, you have two you're being too low. There you have perfect. Bright and dark, bright and dark is perfect. And low one is very soft. So being at the rank 10 seems to be more correctly in this specific case. All right, so before we move over to uh, how you can do the post processing, at the work, the radiologists do most of the post processing. Nevertheless, I was trying to show you how you can do this directly at the scanner if you have the possibilities to do so. If you have Argus, it's more a cardiac uh, package. If you have that available, you can do it directly at Argus. Or if you have Singovia, you can do it there. Or if you have third part uh, software, you can also do it there. But today, I'm going to show you how you can do it in Argus. You just mark those three sequences the reface, the magnitude, and the phase contrast. And so I'm choosing the 10, the rank of 10 here, because that's, those are the images was, was, which was great. 2 was too low, 20 was too high, 10 was perfect. Mark those, go into application, push on the Argus, and it will load automatically over to you. In Argus, we're going to do some modification right here, post-processing. So the refaces images are right there, magnitude, and the phase contrast. For being able to do the post-processing, just go to that icon right there. Okay. And then I want to zoom in a little bit because it's very small. So if you only choose one image here and you choose the tools and you choose the zoom pan, you only zoom one image. We don't want that. We want to zoom the whole sequence, the whole um, package, right? So what you can do now, you can uh, mark the first one there, go to the last one, hold down the shift button on the uh, keyboard and then mark the last one. And everything will be like that. And then my friend, go to Argus and zoom. Whenever you zoom in one of that, you will zoom everyone. So that's exactly what we want. Now I'm scrolling through here so I can check. Bright dark, bright dark is perfect. I'm gonna find an the image where I can see it's very bright, where it's easy to put a ROI, region of interest. For being able to do that, we're going to do the circle right there. The circle is activating, the drawing circle is activating, and we're going to put the ROI right in there, covering, trying to cover the whole aqueduct. Okay, so it's only one slice. That's 
what we see here is only one slice I draw it on, but I want to propagate this. The whole package, you have a few options here. You have what we call propagate left, or right, in slice, or copy contours. I did try a few of those. I didn't find anything to work perfect, perfectly, so I found out that the copy contours works great for this case. So I'm choosing that one, and voila, everyone is copied now. And the good part about this anatomy is that it's standing still compared to a cardiac. If you do a face cardiac, your cardiac can move, be moving, right? So by using the Argus for cardiac and face contrast and quantification, you need to redraw a few slices here and there because the cardiac are moving. But for this, it's standing still. So it's much faster, it's much easier. So see, it's perfect. Seems good uh, propagated. So we go in here to the results. In here, you have a few graph and tables and vice versa things you can check out. Peak velocity, you see, this is exactly the same graph as we saw in the paper, right? You have some values you can check out here. And this is something the radiologists do at our work, so it's nothing we uh, radiographers do. But it's good to know how to do the process processing, the velocity, the flow, the net flow. You have all the possibilities here, the area, the summary. So it's, it's pretty awesome to being able to do the post processing if you want so. Okay, let's go back to uh, why we did the static image, the, the, the three images I did, the cis, the T2 space, the T2 weighted 2D. So at our workplace, like I mentioned it before, we only usually do the static part, the quantification is more for studies, nevertheless, we do a cis, it's because we get thin slices, we get good contrast between the fluid and the, the surrounding tissues, and we're able to look at the ventricle very clearly. And you see here, it looks like it's clear there, and you have also the possibilities to do this thin MPRs in multiple planes. And then we're using our 3D space, a T2 weighted, exactly for this purpose. You can see there's some flow void right there. Why is the flow void? It's because they go something through there. There's flow going there and it's causing deface, it's causing artifact. Flow void. This is exactly what we need. So sometimes artifact is good for our purposes. The same is for 2D tools, Beneco, what we did back in the days for its same purpose, the flow artifact. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. I hope this video uh, meets your expectation when it comes to this topic. Nevertheless, I do have a question for you at the end of my video. Do you do static images or flow quantification or a combination of both those two? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button and hit the subscribe, hit on the notification bell so we get a ding ding whenever new things from me are coming up. So until I see you in my next video, really want to say thanks for watching the far end of this video and uh, take care. I see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.